Hey there, it is Tom Sher on behalf of Indie Structure Productions once again, and we are continuing on with the great guitar build off slash anniversary build. I have no issues with you using the chapter markers to kind of skip around the video a little bit, as long as you find the content that you're looking for. This time we're gonna be working on, well, whatever it says in the title. So I just got home from the workshop, picking up the guitar from the spray room. And we're about to set into a rather long evening of putting this thing together, assuming that everything's gone perfectly as planned. Back plates, still smell pretty good. And here it is. Oh, bummer. There's one little, tiny little drip there, but at least for now, it doesn't seem like it's all that, hmm, it might be a bit sticky. Oh, yeah, well, I need to move that back into its case. Thank you for letting us borrow your case for the time being. You go back in there, and I'm gonna go change into some workshop attire. When we come back in, well, no time at all for you, we're gonna get started on putting this whole shebang together. You need to do the fret work, need to make the nut, and then all the fretboard, put it all together, set up, intonation, electronics, of course. And uh, yeah, demo on Monday. It is currently Thursday? I wanna say it's Thursday. I've lost track of days. <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. Pretty much the only logical place to really start is with removing the masking on the fretboard and uh, cleaning up more than likely a little bit of the edges. Um, there tends to be a little bit of clear coat. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Yeah, there's virtually no cleanup needed. There we go. There's a little bit of cleanup that needs to be done. All right, so, and usually I like to pull away from the painted or clear coated surface. I've noticed that it voids the risk of pulling any of the lacquer up. Not too bad. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a rub here with the uh, 320. Great, fantastic. We could go ahead and do the nut. Now I already have a good candidate here that needs a little bit of a fine adjustment. It's a bit, bit too big right now. So I need to cut that down to size a little bit. But however, it is a good place to start. So I'm gonna be using Corian for this. And how deep do we need it? Let's start at eight mil. So that's gonna be way, way too high to begin with, but we'll whittle it down to the right size. All right, let's cut that out. I wonder if there's a better way of doing this. So I'm using my old Pax fret sawing saw for this. This is gonna take a while, so I'll be back shortly. <laughs> I have my nut roughly the size up. There's still quite a bit of work to do on it. But however, this isn't perfectly flat surface. It 
is going at an angle. And a good way to make sure that your nut gets that exact same angle, a little bit of sandpaper, the size of the nut slot, and then find edge of your nut that is nice and square. Have that up against the nut line or the end of the fretboard here and sand away. So literally the only place that I'm pressing down is up against the end of the fretboard here. Other than that, I'm not really applying any pressure. Not getting it on the full width just yet. I can see that I'm taking away more at the front. Again, there's a process that will take a little while. So I might come back and show you the finished result in a bit. With the nut properly in place there, I'm gonna take a half cup pencil and use that over on the top of my frets here. get the height of the nut. And a scalpel blade to score the edge of it, which I now fumbled a little bit. There, all right. So that is now the size that I wanna cut out, so. Back to the coping saw. Cut that out, and then we're gonna to start to uh, fine tune that shape. Get the radius on there, mark out the fret slots, and uh, sorry, string slots, and so on and so forth. But yeah, let me cut that down to size. Now the next thing I need to do is get the same radius on the top of the nut that I have on the fret boy. Now I've usually just gone by and done this with a file, but Chris Franklin, I believe, turned me on to this, uh, this very good trick where you, you, you're using a sanding block to sand the radius on your fretboard. Why not use that very same sanding block to do the exact same radius on your nut? I mean, it's kind of a given that you would do this. And I had not even thought about it. So thanks, Chris. This is a, a much better way of doing things. I got plenty to go. There, I think that looks good. All right. There we have it. Mark four mil on the base side, on the side of the nut, and three and a half mil from the treble. It feels really strange to be working on such a large size nut when usually I work with the quote unquote fender style nuts for my guitars. Right, so string spacing rule. How many would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, to get to about this territory. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Now I have all of them marked out. And usually, now at this point, I would go and start all of them off at least a little bit with 0 0.10. So it was a bit flimsy at first. And the idea here is, as I've shown in many videos before, is to essentially match the headstock angle so that the highest part of the nut is at the very back of the nut, because that is the intonation point. And that we don't want to change. Currently, this just looks like, well, just a block with a couple of uh, lines scored into it. So now it is time to round everything over, make it the final shape and make it look nice and feel nice. Because what I always say is that a good way to tell a very well-made guitar is by how well the nut has been made. Because that usually 
is actually a pretty good telltale sign. So I'm gonna round off the entire front. We're gonna do very little in the back because we don't wanna change that. And currently these are, the slots are very, very deep. We don't need them to be that deep. So easily remove a lot of material right now. The leveling beam, as you can see, a couple of different files. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make this look real nice. We want half of the string to kind of protrude because if it sits deep inside the nut, it might have a tendency to bind and break something. Then to round the end, and then I'm just gonna do ever so slight bit on the very top here. Not enough to actually hit the bottom of the fret slot on the back here, but enough to just make that comfortable. Okay, I feel a little bit corner there still. All right, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and sand this up to, I guess, well, we'll see, maybe 600. No doubt about it, that is a very big nut and it feels so weird because I'm not used to, used to these at all. All right, but hey, let's get that in place. So what that's gonna take is just one single drop of super glue. Uh, actually, let's put one there and one there. That's all it really takes because all that does is prevent the nut from slipping. The strings and string tension is what holds the nut in place. So essentially this is just a sort of little extra bit to keep it in place, but actually not very necessary. Right, I guess we should do the headstock inlay. Now, there really is but one place we could put it, which is right around here. So I'm gonna measure that out and probably there. Let's have a look at how that looks. Centered along the truss rod channel here. Centered between these. I think that is where we're gonna put it. Carefully, because I don't wanna put a scratch in the headstock, a place where I don't need it. Reinforce those lines. Because the wood underneath is so light in color, I will probably have to use a little bit of stain or something, or paint right along the edge there, just to kind of not make it stand out as much as it does right now. Now, as per usual, I like to do the headstock inlay as a sort of half inlay. So it's a bit three-dimensional. And to that end, I'm gonna kind of reference the back plaque as well and do a chamfered edge on this as well so it's not a sharp edge on it. And um, yeah, I'm gonna show you the engraving of it too in a little bit. But first, let's just remove all the excess material here.
nut is now in place and we're about to do some fret work. To mask up the fretboard again, then it is a matter of polishing the frets really because we've already crowned them, done the fret ends, leveled them. Technically, just need to make sure that they're nice and shiny and feel very smooth to play. It's been a long couple of weeks, um, a lot of very little sleep and uh, yeah, now I have a few hours to get this entire thing finished up before demoing on Monday. It's far from ideal, but I got myself into this mess by not picking up on the build until much later. All right, anywho, not gonna bother you with the boring stuff. There's still some scratches going this way. We're just gonna get to first sanding those out with some 320. Then we're gonna move on to the polishing abrasives and finally some chrome polish. Side of the fret and top of the fret ever so slightly. I don't wanna create another plateau in the middle there. I just want to get rid of all those scratches on the very top left over from the leveling beam. Then after that, I'm just gonna show you real quick. After that, we're gonna move through the grits here. So we have a very coarse, Brace of rubber, then of course, medium, fine, and super fine. Now this is all well and good, getting the frets up until this point, but I wanna go a step further and put on some metal polish to really make these shine, but also to kind of knock down on any excess friction. So these are now the first three. Those are the ones that have been nicely polished up, as you can see. Light is bouncing off them, and now I need to do all the rest of the frets. So, you know what time it is. Time-lapse time. Oh yeah, here. A closer look at the headstock inlay now in place. And the nut, which, it's fine. It's just, it's way too big. I don't, I don't really like it, but it definitely, definitely does the job. All right, so I'm gonna use some all metal polish and I'm gonna do probably three frets at a time. Glob some on there, spreading it on the frets themselves there. All right, and now we get to really buffing these nice, get them nicely shined up. I could use a sort of the multi-tool for this as well, but that goes just as fine by hand. I'd say that that's a, uh, Significant change. Keep polishing these up. And then after that, we're gonna move on to oiling the fretboard and start on the assembly. Bet the focus is around here. So I'm gonna be using the Dunlop deep fretboard deep conditioner to uh, oil the fretboard. Let this kind of just soak in for just a little bit. Wipe away the excess and buff it all up so we get all the remaining metal polish off of the frets, but also oil all the excess oil off of the fretboard. We should be left with a really good Gorgeous looking board. I can't wait. There's a little bit of flame in the board, so I can't wait to see what that looks like with the oil. Okay, here we go. Oil on the inlay. Let's make that pop. Oh yeah, that looks great. As tired and worn down as I might be, I am extremely pleased at how everything has gone. Um, with this guitar. It has caused a lot of surprises of, um, well, in, case, in cases of, I'm doing processes right. Doing the processes right in the way that I always try to do everything, but have previously perhaps maybe rushed or not done to the full extent at which care I took into this instrument. And Oddly enough, it took me far less time to do everything right 
then to go have then have to go back and fix things. So just moral moral of the story, just do it right. You're not you're not wasting time by actually taking care into doing things the proper way. Trust me, it is well worth every single bit of the effort. Now as well as I I might just usually not really rub this down as much as I am doing now, but I really want to make sure that everything, all the excess stuff that you don't want on the fretboard comes off. And the fretboard and the frets are shiny, as shiny as they can be without the use of a buffing wheel that I don't have. Yeah, um, I guess I've learned a thing or two in the past 10 years, let alone in the past two, let alone in the past year. Um, yeah, last year, one of the proudest, or one of the guitars that I was most proud of was the Celeste that I built early on in the year. That was another one where all the processes just went really well, even with small hiccups every every here and there. It, at the end of the day, had gone a lot better than a lot of other things. Sure, I might have finished the, or finished the four prototypes, so the two Daedaluses and the two Icaruses, but those were started in like 2019, I think, and don't reflect my best work because a lot of compromises were made during the making of them. I'm still very happy with how they've turned out, and they are definitely an essential part of, you know, learning to do my own designs and doing design work, doing prototyping. That's what prototypes are for. It's They're not supposed to be perfect. They're prototypes. They're supposed to be, you know, the things that you make and see that it's like, oh, well, I need to change this, 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 and this. And that's exactly what they are. And uh, in that sense, it's even more awesome that I got to send one of those prototypes to Matt Heafy, a customized one just for him. It means a lot to do that and the fact that he has given input. He's actually, I asked him, now that he's held on for it and played with it and stuff like that, are there any things that he would want to change? And all it really boiled down to was the headstock shape. The headstock shape on the day list was a bit small and certain aspects of the design that could use a little bit of uh, extra care. And yeah, those are things that I have implemented. The, head, the headstock design was already something that I was thinking of and I did do a bit larger on the Celeste already, which was finished beforehand, which is funny. But... Yeah, that's something I have taken into consideration and everything else, but playability-wise and finish-wise, he said that it was great. Of course, there's certain things about it that I would do differently, which, you know, finish was definitely one of them, and just certain small aspects. But I am rambling on about nothing, <laughs> really, while I'm doing this, so I'm just going to turn the camera off and we'll get to assembly. Mm -hmm.